everyone welcome back to the channel this should be a shorter video than usual um, i've got here on the bench a uh, simple stereo amplifier from the beginning of the 90s um, it's quite a basic model uh, it's pioneer a119 uh, 2 times 20 watts and it has just the basic controls bass travel balance an input selector volume control loudness and um, I, this, I don't know, tape too. Um, now, this belongs to a friend of mine and he asked me to have a quick uh, look at it. It's basically here on the bench for a regular checkup because it should still be working fine. He's only complaining a bit about scratchy controls. So we're gonna see if we can uh, have a look at that and maybe fix that. Um, so it should be working, there should be nothing wrong with it. So what I'm gonna do is, um, yeah, check the controls, obviously. Um, check the capacitors, see if they are still okay and if something needs to be changed there. And um, measure the distortion to see if the amp is still working fine. And that should be about it. Because before I hook it up, just to be sh completely sure, yeah, it does power up. See, so you have these LEDs here, and I hear a relay click. So, yeah. Yeah, see, the protection relay comes in. That's good. Um, so it should be working. And um, first I'm going to check if there is DC offset on the speaker terminals before I continue plugging my speakers into this. Now this is a check that you can very easily do. Just put your multimeter on millivolt, like that, and uh, check between the terminals. Mm, what is this? Ah, uh, these, ter uh, these terminals, they, okay, they are snap-on. Fifty millivolts. That's okay. Other channel, 40 millivolts. That's perfectly fine. That's not um, super low, but uh, it's okay. So I'm just gonna turn it off again and um, connect my speakers. Now, where are my speaker leads? Okay. And now we need to connect something to play some uh, music or some tone. Um, let me see what I got here. Okay, so I have my tuner connected to my bench amplifier and then I have the record out from the bench amplifier connected here to the tape in to, of this one. And uh, see, it's working. But indeed, it's very scratchy. But... Whoa. Do we have something that cannot violate copyright? Yeah, this is some classical music station, that should be better, <laughs> but uh... Yeah, it's cr scratchy. The... the input control doesn't scratch, but uh... That seems to be more or less fine. I don't have anything on the right channel. Yeah, there is something... Ah, yeah, that's the input selector, which is also dirty. Yeah, now I have both channels. Travel? seems to be okay bass as well these are not scratchy at all these controls it's the volume control and the input selector okay yeah this is a switch to switch between the two tape inputs yeah because you have two tape inputs but only one position here on the input selector that's uh, okay Okay, um, looks indeed like it's working. Um, let's open this thing up 
and uh, let's start cleaning the controls. Um, what have we got here in the back? Maybe I will unplug it first. Right. Um, it does also have a preamp because you have a phono input. Yeah, we have the lid that comes off and then there is also a panel here on the bottom. So let's start by taking off the lid. Okay, that screwdriver is not okay. I think you're gonna be surprised by how empty this is inside. So the sides are also need to come off. Well, the screws here on the sides. Yep. Let me put this out of the way. See, so this is everything that is in there. Um, not a lot, huh? Um, uh, see, so this is the input selector control. See, here is the knob, and then there is a yeah a metal band sliding through here, and this is the actual actual switch. So, I think we can access that quite well. The volume pot is going to be something different because that's here on this side of the of this PCB. So I'll have to check how to loosen this PCB. I think it is just clipped in. Um, I'm going to check that. Um, for the rest, yeah, we have the filter cans here. This is the, uh, the relay, I guess. Yeah. And then we have here the dreaded SDK module. Or yeah, people these days really hate these modules. Um, what they basically are, they are the complete amplifier for both channels is integrated in this single module. So you don't have any um, yeah, dedicated transistors or any amplifier section. Everything for the amplifier is in this module, in this single module. So that means that obviously if this module breaks, then you are basically screwed uh, or if something goes wrong inside. And that's the reason why a lot of people hate these modules is because they are difficult to find replacements for. Well, you can find replacements. This is an SDK 4152. You can find replacements for these. The problem, however, is that these days, since they are not made anymore, they are obsolete, it's almost impossible to know if you're buying one, if it is a genuine one or not. So if you're buying these, you're gonna go have to go via sources like eBay or AliExpress or some vintage parts resellers. But yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get. Is it an original new old stock SDK or is it a fake one or is it a, a newly made replica? And if it is a newly made replica, chances are probably going to be very high that you're not going to get an original one. What is the quality of the manufacturer or uh, how it is made? It's really difficult to know. I mean, it's not because it's a new um, version or a newly made SDK chip or module that it's by definition bad. There are definitely good new replacements out there, but how do you know? How are you going to be certain? So that's a big issue with these SDK modules. Now, uh, this one obviously is still fine and uh, I hope it stays like this. But um, if this one would be bad, then it's probably, it would be game over for this amplifier because yeah, finding one of these is gonna be a hassle. Okay, um, let me, so we do have quite a bit of capacitors. I can spot check a couple of those and see if they are still okay and um, we're gonna clean this switch and then try to access that switch
Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is try to get access to the volume control here. And for that, this PCB needs to come off or well, needs to be loosened. It's clipped in, but first we need to take off the knobs. Uh, oh, you only need to take off the knobs of the potentiometers, I guess. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, they are uh, screwed in with nuts, which is going to be a pain to reach. Yeah, see, so now we have to loosen these nuts. These are going to be okay, but those are really deep inside. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a tool that fits in there. Okay, so I think this might work. These ones are big enough from this set. See, yeah, I think, are they coming loose? Yeah, they are loose, but um, yeah, they are just uh, not really tightened. They are just hand tight, so I can loosen them without the lever on there, which is okay. Yep. So these are already off. They are greased. This one also comes off with this thing. Oh, that doesn't need to come off. That's the uh, input selector and that one is not connected to that PCB. So I can just leave that one on. <laughs> Okay, don't bother cleaning this because the actual switch is on the PCB. This guy, um, what size is that gonna be? Okay, so that's 10 millimeter, these are 13, and here I do have the space to reach that with a normal wrench. Yeah. So let's put these aside that we don't lose them. This PCB should come out and it is simply clipped in there, I believe. So it just has clips everywhere. Maybe the front panel needs to come off. Uh, let's take the front panel off. I think the front panel must have been put on last. So... And I... As far as I can see, it's only hold, held in place with two screws. And these screws are just a tiny bit shorter than the ones that held the back panel in place, or yeah, the top panel. But it's still not... Ah, there is a third one here in the middle. Ah, there are also two, uh, well, three clips here on the top. Yeah. Okay, you cannot see it, but there are three, three clips here as well. One on each side and one in the middle. Okay, so the top part is loose of the front panel. And the bottom part, I think this one might still be stuck. Ah, I just clicked it back in on the top. Come on. Hmm. 
Man. Okay. This one has clipped in again. Okay. Right. Oh. Okay, yeah. Um, it was me. <laughs> I, well, when you're taking something apart the first time, it's always going to be a bit difficult. But you have to just make sure that all the clips here of the PCB are well unclipped. And then indeed it comes out, I hope. Well, indeed the PCB is loose now, but I'm not sure if it is coming out. Do I, I think I still need to remove the selector switch here because that's now in the way. Yeah, let me take this one off as well. So this panel doesn't need to come off. These oh, ribbon cables are blocking things a bit. Where is it now? Yeah, yeah, this now. Oh, voila, there we have those potentiometers are out. And now here, this side. Okay. Right. <sighs> Finally. There is the volume pot. That's the one we need to clean. And um, I'm gonna check these capacitors over here. And that should be it for this board. Now before you start shouting at your screen for me for hosing this potentiometer, this is cleaning liquid, this is not contact spray. This is to uh, rinse away the contact cleaner after a while. So that this really doesn't harm. In the meantime, I've also checked um, all the capacitors. Most of them seem really good. Um, capacitor used in this unit are all Elnas or some are uh, Nippon Chemicons. They all seem to be really good still. Um, very low ESR and quite close in capacitance. There are a couple here that are a bit well measured a bit weird or I couldn't measure at all only two or three those one I will I will lift out of the circuit and check them out of circuit but the other ones they are all still perfectly fine okay so I think this potentiometer is done um, let's check the other switch the input selector Okay, so the volume pot has been cleaned, the input selector switch has been cleaned and um, yeah, honestly, everything is working fine now. Very, very well actually. Yeah, the noise that you hear is the rain on the roof. It just started raining heavily again here. Um, but uh, see, so... No scratchiness. No channels that are out. Everything is working pretty well. Well, let me show you how easy you can clean this. Uh, let me turn this off. Let me also just unplug it to be 100% sure that I don't touch anything. Um, so this is the actuator, so the, um, the actual switch is here is the metal part and the plastic thing on top is just the actuator which is connected to the knob. So you just pop this out 
and you have to pay attention that uh, you popped out the entire thing and you don't open it up but it's it is it should be quite easy to pop off see you just pull on the back see there you have the actuator and here you can just now clean the switch inside so I uh, uh, cleaned it with some contact cleaner then with some uh, cleaning spray or cleaning washing liquid to wash away the contact cleaner and then with some yeah lubrification for uh, slide switches so that should now work fine and um, then I checked all the capacitors there was one bad one and that's this one which I replaced here um, so see that's the one it's a let me focus here see it's a four 70 nanofarad at 6.3 volts it's a Nikon Chemicon and if we measure it let's get this in shot and let's focus let me just take the correct leads here And if we connect up the old one, so it's a 470 microfarad. See, only 380. ESR is okay, but it's uh, very low. Um, so this one is, yeah, that's the only one that was out. So that one I replaced. The other ones, they are all perfectly fine. The big filter cans, they are really spot on. They are... Um, almost exactly 3300 microfarad what they should be and the ESR is very low so they are perfectly fine the other caps there were a couple ones here in this area which I couldn't measure in circuit so I lifted one leg and tested them and they are also spot on ESR uh, very low or yeah yeah very acceptable so all the caps that they used here they seem to be pretty good now this area here i do recommend that you check the caps here in this area because they are sitting here next to this bridge rectifier and um, i guess there will be maybe a bit of heat in this area um, so you have here the bridge rectifier you have the emitter resistors um, there are some resistors here actually underneath uh, this capacitor so that could be the issue or the cause why this went low so heat is what kills capacitors right so um, but the other ones were still fine only this guy so that one was swapped and um, I think we are done here okay to round things up here on this video um, I have the amp powered on and running a 1 kilohertz sine wave 500 millivolt RMS into the tuner input and I've both channels driven and I have at the moment a bit above 6 volt RMS on both outputs so um, that's uh, a bit more than 5 watts that it's producing now uh, and then let's have a look at the distortion here so this is the distortion meter of one channel I, it's now connected to the right channel and we are here in the scale of 1% so we are just slightly above 2% of distortion so it's like 2.5% um, and it's creeping up and that's because the meter is uh, drifting so um, if I, I normally shoot with this dial I should minimize the, the meter to read the distortion um, yeah I now have the camera in the way it's a bit difficult let me just balance this control yeah we are around dot three percent at the moment um, let's enable the automatic balancing and see what the meter says in automatic mode yeah that's better now these controls here um, allows the meter to automatically balance the distortion, me distortion measurement so see so we are am I poking something here or what is happening see so we are between one and two dot one and dot two percent so dot fifteen percent around that that's perfectly fine according to the specs the amp should be uh, 
below dot two percent. So I guess that's fine, um, right? And this is the left channel. Same thing between dot one and dot fifteen percent. So that looks to be pretty good. Okay, so this is the square wave test. Um, you can see a slight imbalance between the left and the right channel, but nothing major. The purple one is the, or the pink one is the left channel, the yellow one is the right channel. Um, so this is the balance control. See, left channel, right channel. The balance control is still a bit noisy. I didn't hear anything about a noisy balance control, uh, but okay. Travel, travel cut, travel boost, center, then the base, base cut, base boost. That all looks to be pretty good. Loudness, see right, it's also uh, working as expected. So, um, yeah, I think this amp is working pretty well. Everything is working perfectly fine. And I think my friend is going to be happy that he doesn't have any scratchy controls anymore. Except here, this balance pot. Hmm. See, these is, that's a treble. And this is the bass. Hmm. This is annoying me a bit now. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, so I decided to open it up again and uh, clean the balance control. Took me maybe 10 minutes or so, but see, it's it's much better now. Okay, there we have it. I'm done with this guy. Um, not the most spectacular video, probably, but hey, if it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it, right? This just needed a bit of a short service. So um, yeah, these types of work also need to be done. And this is a nice little amplifier, quite compact and uh, still good for many, many years of service. So, um, well, I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video with maybe a actual restoration again. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.